What a day of Formula One racing. This is the Gravel Trap Podcast, Canadian GP debrief. We're doing this just as the race has ended. Max is just about to uh, be presented with his title. And he has made it 50 wins in 75 races. The boy is on fire. It's your boy Degs. Before we get started, guys, remember, we have our whole WhatsApp community, like, we jumped from the tennis, we're watching Roland Garros, and then we all just skipped to the Formula One. So in our WhatsApp community, we have different groups you can join. So we all left the tennis group and we went to the Formula One group as we're talking about the football group, as we're thinking about rugby, because um, there's super rugby coming this weekend, so the finals. But enough of that, guys. You guys just need to join the WhatsApp group. Link is in the description. On top of that, you need to like, share, and subscribe, because we love you guys, and you love us, and we'd love to do this a bit more. Uh, something small about the podcast. I know this is just the second episode we did, I think, the first race, Bahrain. Uh, from today, we'll try and be a bit more consistent whenever we don't have the gravel trap event at the junction. So, trying to hash out how the format is going to look like, and I think we sort of have it. So, I'm just going to be doing this immediately after the race ends. And this is more, this will more or less be like a live reaction of what just happened. And because I've taken notes, I will just take you through incident by incident, what we thought was interesting, what I saw. Um, and also from the last podcast, I realized you guys know so much Formula One and you also enlighten us. So don't forget to like, just, just comment. Tell us what, uh, if I said something that I should have expounded on, if um, there's something I missed, put it in the comments. This is right after the race, so I'm sure there's a lot. We are going to, yeah, that's going to happen between now and like the upcoming week, right? Um, so yeah, this was Canada. Canada was not looking great uh, for starters because um the whole of practice it was just rain first practice there was rain i think the practice was cut short second practice people got in their good laps the first 30 minutes uh when everyone was running on slicks and then it started raining and like no one really people went out but not really that much everyone was trying to collect all the data whenever there was a window uh for racing uh, or for driving um i didn't i didn't manage to watch practice three but i watched qualifying again qualifying it was expected to be rain it was just a weird qualifying and then the weirdest thing happened the weirdest thing happened in qualifying when um george russell who actually got pole got the exact same identical time as max verstappen that is insane it's insane it happened before in 97 uh, if you guys have seen the video that i put out on socials um on our gravel trap page on gravel trap page on instagram i showed you guys the three people it was jacques villeneuve franz someone and Michael Schumacher, who actually tied all three of them. It was the Grand Prix of Europe. That's what it was called back then. Um, so yeah, coming into this race, like it was just like a weird weekend. We didn't know what to expect. Like fans have come out to watch racing and then, yeah. And then again, just before the race starts, like everything is just, things are haywire. With 10 minutes to go, people don't know which tires they're going to use. Are we going to use inters? Are we going to use wets? It was just wet enough for you to know. I mean, it was wet enough to know that slicks are not going to work, right? So everyone was either thinking are we doing slicks or inters this is when everyone was still on um on the starting line then um yeah even when lando was being interviewed he was like yeah this like it's so stressful for us and for the team because you don't know what you're going to do you don't know what the strategy is going to be but for you guys it's going to be fun and boy was it fun it was actually a lot of fun the key thing for russell was because you're up front visibility is going to be nice and perfect for you you're the one in front. No one is spraying water onto your face. So you expected him to start the race and start well. And yeah, he actually did start well. Uh, a few pointers about this track, actually. The draining was not the best. Like even, I think it was in practice two. I can't remember which practice I was watching. The end of practice one, I think. Well, the drainage was quite bad. The drainage is like Old Trafford. Um, yeah, so it like it just it just holds onto water. So they actually had to get pumps and have to pump out water and hope it doesn't rain crazily. This was on Friday. Um, yeah, so the state of the track was just insane. And again, as you guys watch the race, something else about the track: those curbs were killing people. Those curbs, like if you hit those curbs, you are killing people. Max hit it a few times, and I think the last time he hit it, he complained about suspension. Um, George Russell hit it a few times as well, which cost him crucial, crucial seconds, uh, and ended up making him lose a few places here and there. So we'll go through that as we go along, and. Yeah, the big surprise was the two horses. My two horses decided to go on wets and everyone else going on inters. And when the race started, my horses were up front. k Mug went up nine places. He started in 17th place. And within a few laps, the guy is on, he was number eight. 
he was eighth or ninth. Um, no, he was ninth. He had gone up nine places. That was K Mag. Hulkenberg was also gaining places, and I was like, hey, this is it. This is it. So I'm there in the group telling people how today Haas must get one, two. I know, I know, I know I'm not going to get one, two. But as a Haas fan, you need to get the joy whenever it comes, whenever it's possible. That is your one moment you have of banter. One or two moments that you get in a season. So when it comes, you need to take full advantage. My guy, I tweeted these things out. I was just like, one, two, one, two Haas, one, two Haas, everywhere. Um, my name on Twitter, uh, but I changed it. It used to be J Haas, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I just changed it. Um... Shout out to the person who gave me that name. That name is so dope. I won't tell you guys who gave it to me. I'll never give him credit, but I'll just claim it as mine. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it was a bit of a slow start. Um, Russell was in the clear with his with his uh, pole position. And then, uh, other than Haas having a great start, RB, on the flip side, didn't have the greatest start. The Their two cars, Sunoda and Danny Rick. Um, Sonoda was passed by Leclerc and then Hamilton was passed by Danny Ricardo. And for those two, fortunes were going to be completely opposite <laughs> despite starting quite well together. Um, within lap, by lap four, Leclerc was already complaining about engine issues. Um, Hamilton was just cruising. Like the Mercedes today were just looking so good. I was quite impressed by both of them. And yeah, like if it wasn't for Leclerc's mistakes, like these guys would have easily have competed to at least at worst should have gotten a second place position this is russell um yeah um at this point kmag was moving 1.6 seconds faster than russell who was up front just by being on wets but now the tricky part is if there was ever a race that the strategists and their dollar or pounds or euros whichever they're being paid in it was this race like strategy was king and queen <laughs> like strategy the big the best strategies were the ones who are really gaining from this and i feel like lando is one of the people who really gained even though he didn't win the race like his strategy even when they went they fell back after the safety car his strategy brought him back into it you know um and as well some good luck from the likes of george russell just doing dumb things but this race strategy was king and everyone was trying to see okay what is what is what is the other person doing so in the case of Haas for example they were on wets and everyone was like wow these wets are doing well but obviously you stuck to the strategy of inters you can't just then change to wets right because then you're throwing your whole strategy off if you pick a strategy you stick with it and see how it works 18 cars on the track it did that as well so you're not really really risking it you know you're just it's just the two horses that went through in that sense but then now, when do you then come and change from those words to something else, right? So many cars just opted to stay with the Inters. And by, I think it was lap seven or something like that, we already had um, issues with the words. This is us because now it was not raining anymore. And when it's drying up, the words are just getting like, they're just... They're just getting eaten up. Like, in I think it was Crofty who said like once at some point... It just feels like you're driving with burning rubber. I'm oh, sorry, um, molten rubber, because it's just like it's too hot. It's so they're not meant to be driven in such hot conditions, you know. Um, not not hot, not hot conditions, but hotter than the wet conditions they're made for. So yeah, we have then a window where the horses can pit and try and get inters. So uh, the one thing that was actually said in the WhatsApp group, uh, in our WhatsApp community, box box WhatsApp community link is in the description is that whenever it rains like this, it's now up to the driver to tell the pit, yo, I'm coming in. And normally, it's going to be the pit crew telling you, yo, box, box, right? Then you come in and pit. But in this case, it's the driver who has the discretion because they are driving on the track. They know what is grippy. They know what is working, what is not working. So, but they, he should have given a heads up. Even if that's the case, he should have given a heads up, right? So he came into the pits and the guys were not ready for him. Like, no one was ready for him. And he ended up wasting so much time. It was that pit stop was like 16 seconds long. That's minus the pit entry and pit exit. Like, it was such a bad... I, I, I'm not sure if it was 16 seconds, but it was a crazy figure like that. Ended up wasting so much time. And 
all the hard work you did of overtaking nine people now just went to waste, right? Um, not entirely, but you really didn't capitalize on it. Um, so that's uh, that was just one of the instances where, again, strategy was key, right? If you stick with that strategy, you have to be ready for him to come back in at any point. You've already gained an advantage. You should be ready for him. Um, the other thing about rainy conditions is, again, now that there's no DRS, it's just about the driver confidence and mechanical grip, right? So you just have to rely on your car and see how well your car can do in the corners it, despite it being wet. Um, at this point, Max was really coming um, coming at Russell. And I don't know what it was with Russell. Like, he was trying to nurse the tires, but at the same time, he has to defend Max, you know? Like, it was just a weird place. And had Max had DRS at that point because it was too wet, so DRS was not enabled for anyone. If Max had DRS at that point, I feel like he would have had a chance, you know, to at least do something there. But, yeah, what happened? Max also ended up making a mistake, and it was that same turn. And it, it's the Cubs that just gave him issues, and then he ended up losing a position to Norris, who was really, really coming hard at these guys. Like, hey, Norris today, if there was anyone, if there's anyone who deserves... A round of applause today. It's Norris and his team. Like they have the strategy was immense. The timing was crazy. It was like they it was just a really, really dope race. I think I've already given them their flowers. I will keep doing that and I've just done it. Um then yeah, the thing about Inters at that point, like was the track is drying. The one thing about Inters that um it like it, it the good thing with F1 is F1 is a sport that has so much data and so much so many things that happen right and because of conditions sometimes there are things that happen only once or twice in a season and you really get to see them in those at those moments and you end up forgetting these things at times i i i don't know why but i didn't really i hadn't um it's like i'd forgotten how inters degrade you know or i'd never seen them degrade in such conditions where it's like it's completely wet when they start then it drains for a bit and then it, it dries up and then you have to drive with the Inters knowing that it's going to rain. So there was a window where you know it's going to rain. You could get slicks and get the time, but then the moment the rain comes, you have to switch back to Inters. So do you then go back to, do you do that? Do you switch from Inter to slicks, then Inter again? But those are two pit stops, so you'll have wasted 40 seconds, right? Or do you just stick with the Inters? And seeing the tires degrade, but at the same time, um, seeing the likes of Sunoda, Bottas, and Ocon, who the three of them lapped in lap 34. There was rain, it became dry, and then rain again. Seeing those three do that and seeing the others pit just before the second uh, round of rain, it was like the Inters are just, I, I don't know, they're just an amazing tire. Like they really survived. I thought they would not survive as well as long as they did, but um, I was quite surprised. Like they survived the wet bit when it got drier. And then when the rain came back again, because the thing is, you don't want to be driving those inters when you've driven them on dry weather and then the rain comes again. So then the grip that you'd have had to drive them when it's wet has been, you know, has been um, eradicated, so to speak. Like the tires have been degraded just from wear and tear, right? Mm -hmm. So to see Sunoda Bottas and Ocon go through that entire change of weather like three times and still have those tires even through that stint and even it drying up again and still going i i believe they they showed something with that in with those inters the thing with f1 is everyone does different things and then you see the data and you're like oh wow let's do this let's try this you know or because they've done this especially within the races if you're trying to like switch strategies and stuff you need the data and you if you can't experiment with your car let someone else do it and then we copy from them there's another instance and we'll just get to that shortly so yeah seeing how the inters were, were being used and how drivers were nursing them so you don't want to really uh, go hard with them you don't want to be going too hard in the corners when you are turning right for example your car centri centrifugal force means you're being pushed towards your outside so you're really finishing the tires on your left side right but if you're not going as quick to the corners, then you're reducing that force on the on the, uh, on the tires on the left side. So I believe I've said that correctly. It's been a while since I did uh, centripetal and centrifugal forces. But yeah, 
Basically, that's it, right? You're trying to nurse the tires as much as possible. Another way of nursing the tires, if you notice, normally if a track, if someone is on slicks and it starts getting wet, they will they will really stay on the racing line and avoid the outsides. If you look at when they were driving during the wet periods, uh, sorry, the wet period going into the dry, so as not to wear out the tires, you have to go and find the wet areas, which you rarely see in F1, right? People don't just go to where the debris is uh, or, to the, or outside the racing line. With Inters, when it was getting dry, people had to go there because we need to nurse these tires knowing there's another wet stint coming, right? Um, so yeah, the whole nursing of the Inters was quite, quite interesting. This was like a lesson in driving with Inters when it comes to F1. So yeah, pretty, pretty dope. Um again they were doing all of this within like between lap 8 and about 17 18 there and at lap 14 we were being told that rain was expected in 15 minutes um other teams were saying 10 minutes the official whatever from f1 fia is 18 minutes so it was like when is the rain coming so you just have to nurse your tires and hope you're ready for that stint at that point lap uh 16 russell um what did russell do in lap 16 um oh yeah at this point it was it was norris max no norris um sorry russell norris max and then uh, max was really on norris's um yeah norris was really on max on russell's tail you know um and then somewhere in lap 16 max ran a bit wide so like that kind of give the those top two guys like a bit of a breathing space but at this point norris was the quickest driver on track like the mclarens were just on another level at that point of the race in lap 18 is when we finally uh, had uh, drs enabled um again this would have been really really dope if this happened when max was still leading um yeah but drs was enabled when max had already lost his place you know um and at this point, uh, I'm trying to figure out. Oh, no, sorry. Lap 18, Max was still second. Max was still second. So Norris was closing in on Max, and Max was closing in on Russell. But what happened is that Max ran a bit wide. So when Max ran a bit wide, um, it kind of gave Russell that breathing space, right, at that moment. So at this point now, instead of Max being the one pressuring Russell, Max was getting pressured by Norris, you know. And at that point, at that exact moment, after Max ran wide, Norris managed to catch up and be within one second, and then DRS was enabled. So now it was like Max is trying to fight someone behind him with that has DRS, and he has no DRS from whoever is in front of him. And Lando was pff, Lando was impressive though. Lando was impressive, and at that point is when he just he overtook Max. Like it was it was it's so weird seeing this Red Bull being the hunted. They're so used to be, being the they're so used to being the hunters that when they're being hunted, it's like it's so off. But I'm sure to many neutrals and to many Mercedes fans, they love it. Um, I'm a Haas fan, so you can consider me consider me a neutral fan, right? For the first seven laps, yeah, we were one to hopefuls, but yeah, that didn't happen. Um, at this point, Ferrari was ninth and twelfth, which was just insane to think about. Like Ferrari has had the weirdest weekend. Both cars did not finish the race. Like Leclerc just having issues with the engine, signs with the crashes. They were not quick. They both did not make to. Q3 in qualifying, like they've they've been they were so weird. They've just been so weird the whole weekend. Um so yeah, um lap twenty again, as we have just said, Piastri now was um sorry, Lando is the one who pulled a quick move on Max, then he passed Max. At this point, Piastri had the fastest lap in the race, and both McLaren's were actually the fastest on track. Um now, at this point, Norris is really coming after Russell, right? Then, yeah, the pressure, the pressure told. And from what everyone is saying, like, the pressure pressure was was just building. And when the pressure is building, that is where George Russell has proven to us so far that he... There are times it's just not he's not he's not he's not handling, he's not dealing with the pressure well right now, right? Um, he needs to do a lot more to... To really prove to us that he can do this um lap 21 
Norris takes the lead um, and Russell goes to second. Then that same lap, Russell kind of loses control in one of the corners and then Max ends up passing him. So that was the first mistake that Russell made today. At this uh, point, it was Norris 1, Max 2, and Russell 3. That was one of, if not the most nightmarish lap that George would have envisioned um at this same moment albon was passing leclerc because ferrari was just go- going through its own issues right um another battle that was really dope to see was alonso and hamilton it, it was just like a battle of respect at the, in lap 23 they were just going at it in lap i think six or seven somewhere there they were just going at it like this these two guys are legends man 725 starts between them they are just and they just keep doing it and they're just they were just there the entire time you know just proving to these kids yo we we are crazy <laughs> we we are still in it um yeah so at this point um the rain was just about to come down so people don't know what to do should we then because it's it's really at the border it's borderline where it's like it's going to be really dry should we go for the dry tires <laughs> or but if you go for the dry tires and then it drains we'd have to pit again um as i had said earlier so Ideally, no one was getting slicks at this point. You want, you'd want people lower in the grid trying to get slicks and then you get information from them, but no one was doing so. So what ended up happening is, of course, Logan goes into the wall and the first safety car comes out, makes the decision very easy for everyone. So everyone, like most of the grid goes in and pits and gets inters. Um, at this point, um, Norris did not pit. He decided to stay out with his inters that he had started the race with. Two, three, four, that was Verstappen, Russell, and Piastri all pitted. And um, yeah, Alonso then pitted. His pit stop was really bad, a 4.3 pit stop. Hamilton's was 2.3. Um, Hamilton actually managed to get the lead at that point. And then finally, when Norris decided he's going to pit, he he had gained a like a good amount of seconds. He was, he was 20 seconds ahead of second place, right, which was Verstappen. The plan was just about to work. Like that plan, in terms of strategy, they were this close from working. So when he went and pitted and he just came out, he just came out in front of Max. But because he was coming out and the place he was coming out on was wet, he ended up like kind of slipping, like doing like a slip and slide. And that's how Verstappen actually gained the lead. And at that point, Verstappen did not look back. Um, At this point... Um, Hamilton and Alonso were like right behind Piastri. Piastri had not pitted as well. Leclerc decides to go and pit as well, um, but his pit is a bit weird. They change his tires, but the car doesn't come out. So like, it's like you can hear like he's trying to start the car type of thing because he had reported engine issues. Finally, when he decides to start the car, 24.1 seconds have gone just in the pit stop, not even the pit entry, pit exit, minus those things, 24.1 seconds. But he managed to start the car and go, and for some reason the car was now fine. So it was such a weird, weird race for him. And he put on hard tires to make matters worse. It was it was, it was, was too big of a risk, right? Because the truck was not wet enough for hard tires. But had it, had it, had it, had it like come to fruition, they'd have really, really gotten something. But looking back at it, knowing now that the car was still retired, like, yeah, I mean, there was nothing to lose. But getting slicks in wet in wet conditions like that is always a risk because if now he goes into the wall and loses control again that's having to fix a car you know and parts and it's expensive and all of that so they were very lucky to get away with it but i in my opinion is it was too big a risk um at this point lap 34 um science had a bit of damage when he had contact with uh bottas and ricardo and yeah, but by lap thirty four, both Aston Martins were in the top ten. So yeah, the like the guys were. It was it was it was it was such an interesting point. Again, this is at this point, uh, as I said earlier, Sunoda, Bottas, and Ocon had not even pitted with the Inter. So all these things are happening. These guys are just chilling on these same tires, and Sunoda was still in the top ten. So that was really really quite impressive. By lap thirty seven. Leclerc, who won, I think, was it the last race? He won uh, Monaco, yes, was being loved by the top five. That was like a significant moment in time, a snapshot where it's like the winner of the past race is being loved by the top five. Like, that's insane. Like, that's embarrassing. People who uh, Hamilton fans knowing he's going to Ferrari next year, 
<laughs> in the group it was just mayhem it was just mayhem guys were just like is this what we're going to next year and i i kind of feel their pain cuz i mean they're not proving any like this is it's it's going to work right and it's just a matter of believing that hamilton knows what he's doing and yeah that is going to turn things around for ferrari at ferrari you know um but at the top it was only 5 seconds between the top 5 it was quite 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 close and at this point around lap 37 the dry line was appearing it was getting quite dry so this was now a significant moment in time one of the most significant moments of this race is when um gasly decides to go for hard tires in lap 41 No one has information on how the slicks would perform on that track. So everyone is now watching. The moment he says he's going in for the pits and gets the hards, the if you use the F1 up, all the comms are lit up. Everyone it's lit up. It's like, yeah, let's check out how Gasly is doing. The guy is just going to slicks. And to be fair, he actually wasn't. He wasn't too bad, you know. Um um and yeah, like it really everyone was just like, yeah, let's watch what he's doing. Weirdly enough almost a few seconds later or a few minutes later came goes in for goes in for mediums Leclerc's car is retired at this point and then Norris just goes off a bit and Piastri manages to close the gap a bit more dot of a tick but close the gap so now he's being pressured by his own teammate these were the in, this uh, were inters now and these were just one of the first signs that inters were really struggling in this um, in these conditions by lap 44 it became clear that it's now time for slick tires hamilton was the first one to go to mediums piast repeated for mediums alonso for hards max went to go to the mediums russell got the hards norris was still out there norris really bought time like when he was out he really really bought time um and in fact um that moment that i just said about him coming out just like this it happened in lap 47 actually not in the earlier lap it happened in lap 47 where he just came out and then his car just went did a slip and slide and then max just overtook him at the pit exit he was this close from actually doing it like it was such such a dope the strategy from mclaren was just insane um yeah so max just had better grip than him managed to overtake him um and from the previous lap uh one of the reasons why norris actually gained a bit of time on that is when max went and pitted to get the mediums and when russell went and pitted and got the hards their outlap was not the best like it, they really struggled especially russell who had changed to hard tires as you all know hard tires just take more time to warm up and in the wet conditions they take even longer you know and if you don't warm up the tires you don't have grip if you don't have grip obviously you're not gaining any time on anyone so that outlap again the outlap is the lap that you do your your first lap after pitting right when you change tires your first lap after pitting is your outlap it's a very significant lap in formula 1 because it's the one that really warms up your tires or determines how warm your tires were when they were put in right so for example um when leclerc pit and changed to hard tires and stayed in for 24 seconds that was already too long he should have le- normally you, you see whenever they pit they put the, the tires they remove the warmers they put the tires and it goes immediately right leaving as little time possible for them to be out there those 24 seconds to us it seems like nothing but it was big enough for him to go out and actually go to more wet conditions and you could see he he just didn't have any grip so it was already hard for him to get the grip it's it's like catching air you know like if you don't have it it's gone right you can catch it in a bowl i mean in a in a bottle and lock it and whatever it once you open the bottle and it escapes that's it so you never want that air to is that um heat to escape the tires at that moment so yeah and that's where the outlap is very important you need to put out a really good lap and warm up the tires to a, a track conditions you know so that you from the second lap moving forward you are just cruising because it was slightly wet it that's a bit harder to do right so everyone is struggling on their outlap so max and russell really struggle on their outlap and that's when norris was still out on his inters he could only afford to do one or two more laps because the track was also getting really dry which means his tires also are going to suffer if he stays out too long by the time he was pitting he had already gained he had already extended his gap to like 20.7 seconds or something like that so yeah and that was that moment when they left the pit stop and he had just left in front of 
Norris had just left in front of Max, but because he had slicks on and he just got onto the wet, he couldn't gain the grip. Slip and slide, slip and slide. And then that's how Max ended up passing him. Um, right behind him was Russell really putting pressure with DRS, but Norris just managed to um, hold on on his outlap. Then on his second lap, he just made a slight mistake and and Russell was there to pounce. Russell was so quick to pounce um, again with DRS and managed to get second place. Norris is now in third place. Um, at this point, Max also complained about his suspensions, uh, the aggressive curbs. They were quite detrimental to his Red Bull. Um, um, just like in Monaco, this car has like, this car is so weird. Like the moments where, like the first half of the race, this car was struggling. Like when Norris was behind him, he was struggling. He even the way Norris passed him was just so clean. Like though he couldn't put up a fight. Then after the second safety car or the first safety car. Just after the first safety car and just after the second safety car, he's in so much control and he keeps extending the gap. And I'm like, this car is, there's just something weird about it. Like, I don't know, they're just lacking consistency. But it's better to lack that consistency and you're still competing at the top, right? You're getting two, three um, up there. Then um, around lap 49, Lando Norris goes wide on the hairpin. Uh, George Russell takes advantage and actually manages to. Um, get ahead of of Lando that's what happened in lap 49 what you just said with the DRS and then yeah in lap 51 Russell makes another mistake this was now his second mistake he hit the curb and, he, and then he runs wide and Norris manages to get back second position this cost him almost two seconds um, again second mistake that Russell made this was the second of three mistakes that he made, and that really, really cost him. Toto even Toto had to get on the mic and on the on the comms and tell him, "Yo, bro, focus, focus, George, focus." Those were his exact words. Focus, George, focus. And while he was being told that, Crofty was in his best form. <laughs> Crofty in this race, there were three instances where he just killed me. Um, the first one. Um, after, the, after that mistake, he was like, does Russell make too many mistakes? And then he's like, that's a question, not a comment. And again, he has to be neutral, right? He has to be unbiased as a commentator. Um, and then in lap 53, um, as Max was just cruising, this boy, uh, what's his name? Checo. Checo goes wide, loses control, and the, his, the back of his car just hits the wall. The guy manages to, the car is still moving and he goes out. But when you look at the back of the car, the guy has no rear end. It looks like, like it's just things flapping. There's no rear end, there's nothing. In fact, they he was, um, what's this? He was investigated for unsafe conditions. So at that point, you're supposed to stop the car and let the car be, you know, towed, off, um, towed away. Because an F1 car cannot go without a spoiler i can't go without a rear end that is that is that's the entire downforce that is what keeps an f1 car on the floor if you were to switch a bit of a physics lesson if you were to switch um not switch but if you were to flip um the 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 back of an f1 car like the spoiler area where there's the drs if you just flip it upside down and the car goes at the speed it goes it could fly it could literally fly because that's what a plane is. A plane is just the wings. Is just It's just like an F1 uh, rear wing upside down. yeah. And then the way it's been designed, it's that it reduces drag at the top, right? At the top or at the bottom. I don't know. I can't remember which one it is. I did this a long time ago. So what happens is that now the pressure pushes, pushes it from the bottom and the thing rises. And that's how a plane, the wings help the plane go up. In the case of an F1 car, it's upside down. You're trying to reduce the pressure at the bottom and have more at the top. So the pressure at the top means it pushes the car down. And if the car is pushed down, it actually stays on the track more. Small physics lesson. So, um, yeah, he was like, Adrian knew he did not design the car that way. Lol. <laughs> like, I mean, just, just top form. Top form from Crofty. And then the other one that he said was... Um, there was a part where it was only they were going like two cars. There were like two cars going, then another two cars coming, then another two cars coming. Like they just they just have kept on coming in twos. I don't know if it was it was just a coincidence. And he was like, it's like Noah's Ark going two by two by two. And I'm like, dude, dude. That one was it was like a face palm moment, but at the same time, I'm like, oh, you really thought about that one, you know? So shout out to Crofty. Shout out to Crofty for 
bring his A game in Canada um, alongside the strategist <laughs> for every F1 team. Um, then in lap 54, obviously, safety car again comes out. Signs just, I don't even know what he was doing. But he had to retire the car. Um, at that moment, he, he crashed into, who was it? Albon. So the two of them were out. Then, yeah, at this point, it was Al the two Williams, the two Ferraris, and Checo all out. At this point, uh, George Russell pitted and got mediums. Hamilton pitted to hearts. And it was race on because... The rest of the guys didn't pit. They were, I think the tires were about 13 um, laps old. And George's and Hamilton were three laps old by the time the safety car was going back in. And when the safety went back in, it was just fire. Like, obviously, Mark started the race again, lap 58. Started nicely. By lap 60, DRS is enabled. So now everyone is catching up to everyone. DRS was quite effective in this race, I might add. Like, it was really, really dope. Um, Ramis, uh, Russell and Hamilton... Eh, hey, Ramilton. <laughs> Russell and Hamilton were on fresh tires. So those are just people I wrote in my notes that you need to watch out for. Um, then in lap 62, it was Russell versus Oscar Piastri. Piastri just managed to hold on to third. Um, at that same time, Norris was being told, don't worry about Piastri. That was just code for, yeah, he's not going to overtake you. You just keep doing your thing. Um, he's, and then Piastri is being told, hey, bro, uh, do you think you can uh, keep up with... Uh, so Verstappen is doing 17.5 in the second or first sector. Do you think you can do that? He's like, yo, bro, I'm trying to deal with what, what's behind me. Stop telling me about what's ahead of me. Again, that was also code for, if we let you pass, do you think you can keep up with Verstappen? But... I think they did the right thing because had they done that, now you'd risk trying to do the switcheroo and you have two very quick Mercedes right behind you, it could end up quite badly, you know. And then now you put Norris under pressure and he's trying to just maintain that gap and get second place. And you've done so well so far in the entire race. So, I mean, it was good they didn't do that. Um, then lap 63, Oscar Piastri lost DRS. Obviously, he didn't have DRS. He wasn't to, uh, close enough to um, Lando in front of him. Um, sorry, yeah, to Lando in front of him. Then Russell ended up coming for him and there was a bit of contact. It looked like they had a bit of contact. It was like, it was so close. Like, those two were really going at it. Like, Piastri has proven, this is just his second year, the guy is driving like a seasoned vet. Like, the way he was going at it with Russell was really, really, really dope to see. And in the process of doing all of that, Russell blunders again with the cub. And Hamilton is just lacking behind and waits for him and just makes that mistake. Hamilton is through. At this point, people are excited. The group is going wild. It's like, Hamilton is back! <laughs> to be honest, Hamilton was really good this entire weekend. I can't even, I can't even slander Hamilton. Hamilton does not... Sir Lewis does not deserve slander this week because he was... Apart from this one moment, I think in this lap uh, 63 and in Q3, Hamilton did a really good weekend. Sir Lewis had a really good weekend. I need to keep calling him Sir Lewis. Uh, he was now in the top three. And at this point, he also set the fastest lap. This is where you're seeing the hard tires really pay off. The hard tires that he got in lap 54, 55, when the second safety car was out. Yeah. Um, then we move on to lap 67. There's just three laps to go. Russell is just, at this point, like, Piastri is just struggling, you know. Um, Russell is looking quite quick. His tires are, I think he's on mediums. Now he's, like, really picking on the mediums. Then, yeah, he passes Piastri. Sunoda also spins on the grass and ended up losing his top 10 place, his world championship point place. And then in lap 69, Russell is coming after Hamilton and then passes him with DRS with a nifty move. Like, it was... Of all the three mistakes that he made that cost him this race, let's just be honest, cost him the race, that one move on Hamilton was was quite impressive. That one, we have to give him his credit. And yeah, that is how it stayed. Max won, Norris second, and Russell in third place. And um, again, as you said earlier, Max, 50 wins in 75 races. Um, this is the fourth time in five races that Max has beaten Norris, despite Norris being ahead of him. And yeah, one, two, three was Max, Norris, Russell, and then Hamilton in fourth place. Oscar Piastri in fifth place. Fernando Alonso and 
Lance Stroll, 6-7, the Aston Martins. Danny Ricciardo getting a champ championship points in eighth place. And then Pierre Gasly and Esteban Ocon, the two Alpines in ninth and tenth. And my two horses, unfortunately, um, I said they'd be one, two. You, could, you, might, might, as well, you might as well just add a one <laughs> in front of those two numbers because um, they finished 11th and 12th. And yeah, that is the Canadian GP and how it went. So a lot, a lot to take out, take out, take, take out, take away from this race. But we are just waiting to see how everyone gears up for Spain because that's the next race on the 23rd. That's in a, a fortnight, exactly a fortnight. Really, really good race from Max. Um, no, from Norris. Solid race from Max. Really good race from Norris. Russell, mistakes really cost him there at the end. Um, I think Aston Martin will be would be happy for the six and seven. Uh, Danny Ricardo obviously very happy with the eight place finish and the two Alpines as well finishing in the top ten. Is um, yeah how the Canadian GP ended, and that is our debrief for the Canadian GP. This is like live reaction, like. People are still talking on, on the racetrack. We are just like trying to go over our notes. And I think, yeah, we'll be doing more of this just after the race has ended and trying to get you guys to not miss the action, especially right after it has happened. That is our debrief. My name is Deng. This is Gravel Trap Podcast. And we shall see you in Spain. <laughs>